Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Eric, Papa Alpha One, Tango no November Oscar. That's Papa Alpha One, Tango November Oscar. Okay. He says, I own an RSP Duo receiver, and I mainly use it for VHF, UHF, and especially FM broadcast DXing. Let's take a look at that receiver that's this one right here. We'll take a closer look at it a little bit later. It is a very nice little uh, software-defined radio. My question is, do you think the RSP DX, which is a newer model, uh, has better sensitivity and selectivity on UHF VHF. Um, well, let's take a look at the spec sheets for the radios. Before I do that, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Wing K Lock, who is a new patron of mine. That helps support the channel. If you too would like to become a patron of this channel, go to patreon.com slash ke0og and find something that works best for you. Now let's take a look at this question and see what we can do. There are three radios in the line. There's the RSB1A, which is the low end plastic, okay, has a single antenna input and a single uh, type B USB, uh, regular USB jack that takes the kind of USB jack that goes into an HP printer. Okay, and then this is the the highest end, the dual tuner. It's got two antennas, two separate independent radios in there, and a single output. Note that you've got some timing inputs and outputs for oscillators that can be GPS controlled. This is kind of a high-end unit here. Now, these two can be used with the same oscillator for both so that they're synchronized and set them to the same frequency. And you can do some amazing things with diversity uh, reception. Diversity reception is like you have, say, a, a horizontal antenna and a vertical antenna and as the signal fades on the horizontal antenna it may very well come up on the vertical antenna and so you can pick the one that you want this is capable of doing it or you could have uh, antennas that are quite a ways apart from each other several wavelengths apart and a signal fading on one won't fade on the other and vice versa you also have a high Z input over here. It's a pretty high-end uh, little radio. Now, the one in between I no longer have because that was one of the giveaways. Okay, so let's look at the spec sheets for these right here. We've got the SDR Play. Uh, these are off of the SDR Play website. We've got the 1A, uh, the DX, okay and the dual tuner right here okay now this right here the key specifications and highlights comparing these things says overall performance below two megahertz for medium wave and long wave they say that the rspdx is best it was kind of originally designed for these medium wave and low wave things but let's look at the part that he is interested in, where we can look at the noise figures, say, in the FM area. We'll go around 100 megahertz, 3.3 dB, which is not bad for that area. You can see that it's switching from one circuit to another. These figures are kind of ordinary on uh, HF. But uh, when you get up here, 3.3 in that medium range. Let's look now at the RSPDX, uh, which is the one I no longer have, and I hope who, whoever has it is really happy with it. Uh, we look at uh, 100 megahertz, 2.6 dB versus 3.3 dB. 
So that's much better. Okay, in terms of noise figure. Now, at 100 megahertz, the noise figure becomes important. Okay, let's look at the RSP Duo. And we see that the noise figure is back to the 3.3. Okay, so we see that this came out first, then this came out, and then this came out. <clears throat> and we see a smidgen of difference in the noise figure in the 100 megahertz region, which is where you're doing your broadcast band DX. Okay, and... I think, you know, and all of them are alike in that they give a 10 megahertz snapshot of whatever you're looking at, which for broadcast FM is not a lot because the channels take up so much space. So to answer the question, like I said, I've got two of them. The one I use that's set up in my regular station is the RSP1A, okay? very simple. It's got a, a little nameplate on the back. Okay. And then this is the RSP Duo. Is it worth the money to take this, which is actually their high-end unit, and replace it with the middle-end unit? You could do that. I wouldn't bother. I think uh, for what I've used it for, it works fine. But I'm not doing FM broadcast DXing. But you can compare the spec sheets by going on to uh, the homepage, the uh, 4sdrplay.com. The slightly better noise figure will help you hear weaker uh, DX, FM DX stations. If so that's very important to you, it's not like these cost a king's ransom. They don't. Let's look at the RSP DX online here okay SDR play let's find in ham radio okay um, $214 that's with the $35 uh, fall savings event okay so it's not hugely expensive Let's look at the RSP Duo. Let's see, it's RSP Duo. So the RSP Duo is more expensive, okay, at 279 because you get the two receivers in. So in short, uh, you've got choices that you can make here. If you already have the Duo, I don't see that much reason to go to uh, down a step in term of, terms of features, but up a couple dB, uh, not even a couple dB um, in, in actual noise figure. So there you have it. You uh, pay your money and take your choice. Uh, they're available. They're not tremendously expensive. They come out of the UK. Uh, they are constantly working to improve their circuitry. And you know that eventually they'll be moving from these models well, where they'll take the type of front end that was in the, the, the DX and use it in the Duo and so on. They're constantly changing. Plus, they are constantly improving their free software. The software only works with these. I recommend using the house brand software. So there you have it. If you'd like to help support this channel financially, you may do so by going to decastlercom slash support and picking an option that works for you. I've had people ask me which is better, Patreon or directly through PayPal, in order to make sure that the middleman takes the least amount. It's technically PayPal. But um, Patreon offers a bunch of nice features that make it easier for you to uh, keep track of what's going on and so forth. The PayPal notifications, we actually have to send out manually ourselves. That's why I've been kind of pushing Patreon. Somebody asked me if they can send a check directly to P.O. Box 98, uh, Ridgeway, Colorado 81432. And you may certainly do that. Please make it payable to Mount Sneffels Press, or you can make it payable to me. 
uh, and or you can make it payable to Aiden, and then we'll give him that as part of his salary. So until we next meet, 73.